Hello friends, this video on classification of elements part 16 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching the video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 15. We'll talk about the ionic radius now. So what is ion? So if you have any uh, atom, you take out electron or you add electron, right? So you get ion. So you get cations or anions, right? So you add one negative ion, so you get an ion. An ion is nothing but if you see, an ion is a negative ion. That's the full form an ion, a negative ion, right? So one with negative charge is an ion. Please don't be confused. If you're confused with an ion, cation, please note an ion means a negative ion. A ion which has negative charge, that means it has gained one electron. For example. Cl minus is a anion. Na plus is a cation, right? So anion is a negative charge. The one with the negative charge is anion. So you get negative charge when you gain an electron. So anything which is not neutral, any atom which is not neutral, which has negative or positive charges are called ions. And we'll talk about ionic radius. Ionic radius also exhibit the similar trend as atomic radius. Because all of our concept is same, right? The only thing that's called extra charge but the concept even seems it has got neutrons and got electrons. The neutrons get attracted, electrons get attracted from neutrons. And if you go along the period, the neutrons so power increase and they attract electrons all the more. And the it gets shrink, right? The electrons get shrink all the more. If you go down the group, the shells are added and the, the shells are added, so the size increases. Same concept, right? Also note that a cation is smaller than peritone. Why? Because if you see in the case of cation, uh, the proton size is same, but one electron is less, right? So one electron is less. So overall, this guy can attract more because the energy which this uh, neutron was spending on attracting one electron is gone now. It is not required. So the energy which is left, the, the same force can be used to attract other electron all the more. So the cation size will be less. So we understand this. For example, this guy is attracting, let's suppose, four electrons. And each of these, uh, let's suppose five electrons. And it has total 100 units of force. So each guy was getting, let's suppose, 25 units each. One guy is gone. It has four electrons to attract. It has 100 units of energy or 100 units of power. So each will get 25 units to attract. So all these will come a little closer. Why? Because they have attracted a little more, right? Because it has each one is getting more share. So the size of atom will shrink. This is a logical discussion. This thing actually doesn't happen in the real world of atom. The structure is a little complex. There are so many orbitals and all. So there. Things are a little complex, but just to make the concept clear, I'm using this uh, very uh, basic uh, way of explaining where you have one uh, nucleus which has some unit of charge to attract. So, since the electrons are less, so it can attract the remaining electrons more power. Right? And for example, if you see uh, the radius of uh, sodium is 186 picometer, but Na plus is 95 picometer, just half. In case of uh, anion, the negative charge, the size of anion will be larger than the parent. Why? Because one extra electron is there and the neutron has to support one extra electron. So it will not be able to uh, give enough power to the remaining, uh, to the existing electron. The power of neutron will be divided and each of this electron will experience a little lesser force and they will go out. So, the size will also increase. Also, if you see, the moment you add extra electrons, there will be repulsion among the uh, electrons, right? The, the, the other electrons won't want this guy to come. So, there will be repulsion and with that also, the size will increase, correct? So, if you see, fluorine minus has one that is picometer as the size, but chlorine has only 72 picometer. 
Now we will understand isoelectronic species. So atoms and ions just yes, same number of electrons are called isoelectronic species. We will see some trends in the isoelectronic species. So example of isoelectronic species is O2 minus F minus Na plus Mg plus 2. They all have 10 electrons. But their size will vary. Why? The radius will vary because their charge is vary. So each of these has different positive charge. Correct. For example, oxygen has 8 positive charge, chlorine has 9, sodium has 11, 9 is minus 12. The positive charge varies. So the size will also vary. So in this case, this guy will be smallest and this guy will be largest. Why? Because 12 protons can attract 10 electrons closely and 8 protons will not be able to attract 10 electrons easily. So it will expand. For example, this is 8. So they are 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Actually, it is not like this in the real world. It is in the sp orbital shape. But just to understand the concept of it like this, in this guy is 12. You can attract more closely. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Correct because this guy is 12, it will give more power, attract these electrons more powerfully. This guy will not be able to attract this electrons as powerfully as this, so the size will increase. We'll take my example. Which of the following species have the largest and smallest size? Correct. First, let's see the non charge magnesium and aluminium. They are part of third. Period. Okay. So I have my magnesium here, I have my aluminium here. As I told that if you go across the period, size decrease. So I'll write here decrease size. Decrease size. Let's suppose magnesium is this much, aluminium will be this much. So two elements I have post. Right? And then I say I get Al plus 3. So Al plus 3 will be even smaller than aluminium. Correct? How? Because it is told that a cation will have less electrons. The moment it will have less electron but the same number of neutrons will attract all the more. So Al plus 3 will be somewhere here. So I have put these three. Now I have Mg plus 2. So Mg plus 2 will be smaller than magnesium. that is for sure. So it will be somewhere here. But I am not sure whether it will be here, here or here. I don't know. I don't know where it will be. Right? I don't know the exact position of Mg plus 2. But now let's compare Mg plus 2 and Al3. So Mg plus 2 has magnesium 12 neutrons and 10 electrons and aluminium plus 3 has 13 neutrons and 10 electrons. This guy has more neutrons. These are all isoelectronic. Correct. So isoelectronic they have same electrons but this guy has more neutrons so aluminium will be smaller. So that is for sure that this can't be here because Mg plus 2 is bigger than Al plus 3. Al plus 3 is smaller. So Al plus 3 has, it cannot be here. So Mg plus 2 can be here or here. But can I actually find where is Mg plus 2? Not able to find. So let's see if I'm able to answer with this data only or not. Right. So the, I have this uh, two option. One series is Mg, Mg plus 2, Al, Al plus 3 is one option. Or the other series I can think of is Al, Mg, Al, Mg plus 2, Al plus 3. Correct. Two options I can think of. Let's see if with this I can answer the question or not. Which has the largest size? On both case, largest sizes. Sorry, Mg, largest. Which has smallest size? Al plus 3. 
so with this also i am able to answer the question because it doesn't matter which option i pick because i have two uh, two options i was confused which series to go for but you take any of this series the answer comes out to be same so for my answer perspective i can with this data itself i can tell that magnesium mg is largest and this guy is smallest but actual trend i am still not able to tell but it's okay because i answer question asked me to tell which is the largest and smallest with this i can tell that my largest is magnesium and smallest is aluminum based correct thank you visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos try free online tests get the best quality study materials study from the best tutors and mentors and much more thanks once again